It's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got just an amazing song from my favorite guitar players of all time. We're going to learn how to do Steal Away the Night by Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes. So uh, I had actually thought I'd done this before. This is the only reason why we are uh, 12 and a half years into this channel. And this is the first time I'm doing this song because it is one of my favorite Randy Rhodes riffs. And I was just assumed I had done this. When you're a couple thousand song lessons into the game, you lose track real quick. And uh, so when I was going through looking for some more Randy to do, I just visited his gravesite last week. So I'm very inspired to uh, do some more Randy, the few that I thought that I had left to do, and steal away the night sitting there and not done. So we are going to jump on that today. I'm doing the tribute version, by the way. This is the live version. This is my favorite version. It's my favorite album uh, with Randy on it is the live stuff. Uh, when he's live, he's, he just would add so much. I think it's a better recording, too. The guitar sounds better. The tone sounds better. The recording overall is better. So it's got more energy, and he's just throwing all this cool stuff in there all over the place. So he's, he's just going nuts. So it's a lot of fun to play. So we're going to do the tribute version of Steal, uh, Steal Away the Night here. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you know it's a new video. And if you like and comment and you actually watch the videos, just engage with the videos, it really helps the, it get pushed to more people. YouTube, that's how YouTube works. So if people don't engage with the lesson, um, it won't get seen and then the channel dies and then I go and get a job at Walmart. So let's not make that happen. Let's, let's keep this going. So please watch the videos, like and comment. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, uh, Check out my Guitar Academy. It's the best way to support what I do online. You'll see a link to it in the description below. It gives you a free seven-day trial too. And my academy contains all my guitar courses for more, you know, if you really want to get into playing guitar and, and learning guitar at a high level. We have complete beginner courses, but more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training theory, guitar tone. Uh, I go live every Saturday there with Academy members, just like a live video chat with me, get your questions answered every week in real time. And you get personalized support from me beyond that as well. So please go check it out. Let's jump into the song. So I'm in standard tuning here, and we have this killer riff that starts the track. <laughs> All right, so you can't go wrong with that. So we're going to start here. Now, I will say that if you're referencing, if you're more familiar with the, the recorded version of this, the, the studio recording of this, um, there's some parts, especially in the verse, which he plays slightly different, the riff. Um, I think just he kind of settled on what he liked better over the years. Uh, a couple of years he played it live, and, um, and he stuck with this, which I actually prefer as well, too. That's why I'm doing the live version. So... Um, if you're like, oh man, that, that little, little bass line's not in there, it's because he doesn't do it um, live. So that's what I'm doing. So let's start with this. So we're going to start with two hits on the low E string. And then you're going to play the ninth part across the D and the G. And then we just kind of have this little lick, what we, what we do. We do 7, 9 on the low E string, palm muted. And then play 7 on the, uh, the, on the, across the D and the G. So when you do that little move, the last finger that you're using is your ring finger. And that tells you you're going to be playing the index finger on the D and the G. It's kind of a way you can kind of categorize in your brain. And then you reverse that. You play 9-7 on the low E, and then since this was the last finger you used, use your ring finger to play the 9s and double stop. So it kind of, you know, whatever ring finger you used last here, you use the other one for the double stop. So it kind of rotates. All right, so we have this. You can start the whole thing with two hits, though. And then that ninth fret double stop. And then you start that. So we have. All right, and 
then we're going to kind of take the same riff down here to the third fret. You're going to start with 5-3 on the low E string. So since you ended with that finger, then that means your third finger, ring finger, is going to come over to the fifth fret on the D and the G. And then reverse that to the 3 5 and low E to 3 on cross the D and the G. So you just do that riff once there. And then from here, we're going to do this. You're going to pick the fifth fret and then the open E string. And then. So this is going to be this kind of F-sharp power chord here at the second fret. Then the open E string, back to the F-sharp power chord, and then jump over to the B power chord at the second fret off the A string. Sometimes when he grabs this, he'll, he'll put that F-sharp in the bass, just to kind of thicken up that B power chord. A lot of times he does it, so it's just that B power chord. Hit it a couple times, and then the very last thing in the riff is, sorry, you can just hammer two to three on the low E. So we have. So all together. So playing something like that, you, I can literally sit in a room for five hours and just play that riff over and over again. It's so fun to play. All right, so now we get to the verse, uh, which uses a slightly different way he plays this riff on the recording. There's actually multiple guitars on the recording. Um, there's not just one guitar part that you're hearing on the studio recording. So this live version kind of doesn't do a lot of, so much of the, that you sometimes hear in the verse, uh, the, the, how the main wrist play, you hear a little bit more of that in the verse than you do in the live version. Um, so we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be do like the live version here, which is pretty much straightforward here. And it doesn't do anything on the low E string except for right there. I mean, any kind of note. You can keep coming back in the open E between each hit. So it sounds like this for the verse. So the great thing about the live things, especially too, he throws a lot of cool fills all over the place, and that's why we have to cover each individual verse separately. Even though the riffs are similar, it's going to have different fills, and you don't want to miss any of them when it comes to Randy Road. So uh, we're going to do them all. So this first verse here, so we're just going back between, between those nine double stops and the sevens. But so you're just hitting the low E string before each double stop. You hit the low E string twice, and you did. Now after the second time you play the, the seven double stops, then you do it. Seven, nine, muted on the low E string. And then go back to the seven double stops, and slide up to nine. And then we're gonna come up here. Now you can hear that there's a, a overdub on the yeah. on the studio recording. There's this kind of thing going, but live he's like he wants a, kind of a higher voicing. So that's just coming up here and playing this uh, G major triad at the 12th fret across the D, G, and the B, and then you resolve that to a D major triad at. The 10th fret, I mean 12th fret on the D, 11 on the G, 10 on the B. So go back and forth between those a couple times. We're gonna 10th 
take that down to an open G power chord. So that's basically just the third fret on the low E string. You're gonna mute the A string on the bottom of that finger. Open D, open G, third fret on the B and the high E. So, so far we have this for the verse. And then we go on to this little lick here, which is also slightly different than the, the studio version. So right here, that last note was the open E string. On the recording, it's the A string. It goes. He hits the open A on the recording. I like the low E version that he uses on the live track. So this is heavily palm muted. It's the open A string first, then the third fret on the low E string. And then we're gonna go straight down. We're gonna go three, two, zero on the A. And then three, two, zero on the low E. If you're wanting to play closer to the studio recording, that last open E should be an open A. So we have this. So. From, we hit this open E, then it goes to a, a B power chord. Now, once you get on the studio recording, it goes between a sus chord and the regular major, but um, we're just, like I said, we're just gonna do the live version. Because it's cooler, we have the um, B power chord there. And then the first fill is just taking the second fret there on the uh, G string and bending it up two whole steps. All right. Um, he was a little man, but he had some strong hands. All right, and then uh, we get back to the same riff again. Same riff, and then just a different fill to end it. Instead of that bend of the second fret, we have a quick open B string, and then a harmonic at the fifth fret on the G. You can do a little way bar action there if you want. And then we get to the actual chorus. All right, so let me play the chorus for you real quick. Looks like this. And then back to the verse. All right, so this starts with um, this big E power chord, which is the open E string. You're going to borrow the second fret across the, uh, on the A string across the A and the D. Then add the fourth fret there on the G string. And then the open B and open high E string. So he hits that a couple times. And what he does, he goes between uh, this E power chord and an A sus 2 chord. And, and so I'll just show you the chords first, and then we'll talk about there's a little pull off in there getting to the A. But we have just the open A string, second fret there to the D and the G, open B again, and open high E. So that's the chord we're going to. So you start with a couple hits on the E power chord. And then he does a quick pull off from two to zero on the D. And then you go into the A. Now, when he gets on the A, he kind of hits the bass string. And then he just heavily palm mutes it. And he doesn't really stick with a strict pattern that he uses here. He kind of changes. He spends more time on going across the B to the G string. Up. But he gets the high E in there some too. So it's really kind of, you do anything you want on the top three strings. I kind of start low and then, then I get those high strings that kind of hang in the top three. Kind of heavily pop it. And then we're going to end this first chorus with this octave. Yeah, this octave riff is the, almost the end. So it starts with this B octave. So that's second fret on the A, uh, fourth fret there on the G. So mute all the other strings, including that D string. And the uh, rhythm he does, he goes down, down, up. So you do that 
on every fret up to the ninth fret. All right, so, and then we get to the real ending of the chorus. All right, so that's going to be the uh, double stops here at that fourth fun of the D and the G. And then you hit the open A string twice, kind of palm mid. Then to the second fret um, double stops, same two strings, the D and the G. And then back to the open um, A string two hits there. So we have this repeat. And then that, then it kind of does that rhythm. And then it does a series the third time through. And the, the third time through, it just hits the open A string once each time. With this. Repeat. Sometimes I'll do kind of a slide like that to take us back to the next section. All right, so then we get to verse number two. So the the um, pretty similar, what he's going to be doing with the actual fill. He does add, do some one little thing different because I'm just trying to get everything, every kind of note for note thing here in this song. So verse two is actually played like this with the fills and everything. <laughs> to the chorus. So um, now that's going to be like same riff. So when we get to this G power chord strum, oh. everything's the same so far. We got a little fill into the B power chord, and then we have our first fill for the second verse, which is... So he's doing an open B string first, and then you're gonna pull off, you know, play with whatever fingers you want, but it's just two, uh, on the, I'm sorry, on the third fret on the high string, pull off to two, pull off to the open. Then the same thing on the B, two, pull off to two, three, pull off to two, pull off to the open. And then over to the G string, you're gonna go two, pull off to one, pull off to the open G. So, and then come back onto the two. So that first fret there is really quick. You can barely hear it. Then we go, there's a slight difference now in the in the verse riff I wanted to point out. Um, we have this, instead of this, he mixes it up, he does this. So after that seven nine, instead of doing that little slide from the double stops to seven and nine, you do that seven nine again, but jump up here and grab the double stops at the twelfth fret on the D and the G. And then he stays there. Do that same figure that we had before. Into the same G. Same riff. And then we have this series of harmonics. He's gonna start this with a quick muted hit on the open D and G together. So, and then we have the harmonic start, which is a, which is going to be this fifth fret across uh, the, the G, B, and high E string, the harmonics, over to the seventh fret there on the B, and then over to the fifth fret there on the D string. And then we get to the chorus again. This chorus is slightly different. It lasts the same amount of times, three times through the rip, but the second time um, he's gonna add a little fill in there, and the third time he's gonna do an octaves, uh, the little octave riff, but an octave higher. So it looks like this. <laughs> To the main riff. So, same chorus. The 
but after the second on the second time through play through this course right after the pull off he jumps up here to the fourth fret on the d and just does this kind of slow trill between four and six and, and it you think it is that he makes it sound so killer i mean it's such a little simple thing but it sounds it just fits perfectly and then the third time through, it's the same riff. And then instead of ending with the lower octave one, I'm going to bring that up an octave. So there's a fourth fret there on the G, seventh fret on the high E. Remember, mute all the other strings, including that B string in between. And then we'll do the same thing, same riff, that little riff, that little rhythm. Just take it up a fret each time. All the way till you get to the 11th fret. Now, before when we ended the uh, chorus the first time, we went to that A ring. But this time, it's going to go straight to the main riff of the song. So this is after the second chorus. We have the main riff, which there takes us to the bridge. But this main riff is, that we, is like we, what we played at the intro. And it's got... One little difference in it, though. So let me play through it for you real quick. Can you pick up that little quick little difference? It's not easy either. So the first time through the same as before, just like in the intro. Second time though, when you're doing this riff here, the last time instead of going like that to end the riff, it hits the seventh fret on the low E string, then the open A, and he uses that that little quick little shift with the open A, where he doesn't have to play anything down here, and he jumps up and grabs the 15th fret across the B and the high E string. So it's a quick little jump. You can use whatever. However you want to play those notes, I usually grab it with my pinky. So it's just a, so slowly, right here, and then the rest of the riff is the same. So like I said, that's just something he does on the live recording there. All right, now we get to the bridge. Uh, looks like this. That little interval right there um, takes us to the solo, so I'll stop there. So we're going to start with this open E power chord. So it's the open E string, 7th fret on the A, ninth on the D and the G, then the open B and open high E. Then we're going to jump up here and play this B major chord. Now this is another section on the uh, studio recording. There's kind of multiple guitars going on here. I was able to track down on YouTube. Uh, man, there's so little video of Randy Rhodes live. It's just, a, it's just why this he was not better documented live on video. I have no idea. And if it is a live video, they're just kind of just got it on Ozzy the entire time, which Ozzy's great too. But come on, Randy, this is just a just a gift to the world. So I don't know why they didn't spend more time on it. But anyway, he um, he. Uh, you can see it briefly. There are videos of, there's a live video of him playing this so, supposed live video, but it's not. It's edited to make it look like he's playing uh, with Ozzy, but it's it's actual a live show after Randy died, and they're editing in footage from when he was in Quiet Riot. He's wearing the bow ties and uh, what are polka dots or whatever, and he never did that in Ozzy. So it's obviously a, kind of a bad edit job. And the guitar parts, he's not doing anything what you're hearing, so it's ridiculous. But um, there is some a live recording from a distance. They focus mostly on Ozzy, but you can see a couple things what he does here, and you can see what he does in this bridge section, especially. So he does this open E chord, and he jumps up here and grabs his B major here. So that's the 14th fret there on the A, and then across the 16th fret of the D, D, D. Take that down to an A major, so you down two frets. And then you're going to go down to a G, but when you do that, you're going to 
you're going to add the D, the 10th fret there on the low E string in the bass. So we have this. And then jump back up here, and you're going to play an A sus 4 chord. So you're back up to the 12th fret chord that you did before, and you're just going to add the 15th fret there on the B string. And then back down to the normal A, and then back to the same chords again, starting over. And then from there, we go into the solo. So let me play through the solo for you real quick. And um, when it comes to Randy Rhodes, it's, it's not an easy solo, but compared to a lot of his other stuff, it's one of his more approachable ones. It does have some hairy licks in it, though. So anyway, let me play through it for you real quick, and I'll show you how to play it note for note. There we go. All right, so lots of fun. So we're going to start here. Um, I, I think I've listened to the Tribute album probably more than just about any other rock guitar album I've ever listened to, except for Steve I's Passion Warfare. Maybe I think the Tribute album is probably right up there besides that. Maybe Extremes Pornography. It's definitely in the top three. So um, we'll start here with uh, this. <laughs> So this is going to slide again kind of to this 12th fret there on the G string and then catch that B flat on the B string, which is the 11th fret there on the, on the B string with it. Then. So that's a bend at the 13th fret on the high string. And then play 13-10 on the high E. Then 13-11 on the B over to 12 on the G, and then play 13, 11 on the, on the B again. And then you're going to come down here. It's a quick little troll between 3 and 4 on the B. And then he jumps up and grabs the, between, the troll between 3 and 6 real quick. And then you're going to grab the 4th fret there on the, on the A string. So it's real important, when you hear this part on the original recording, there's a lot, especially coming up with this whole diminished run, it's really kind of a, a harmony line. So I'm just kind of playing, obviously, what he does live. And this is something else that I can grab just a little glimpse of, a little grainy glimpse of where he's, because originally when I transcribed, I was doing, I play like that, it's more, but I was able to catch him doing it, and he plays it like that the second half, but the beginning of it, he starts it down here. And then he does it the way I was doing it. So instead of doing it. All right, so this little descending lick here, um, it's gonna be played. So we have pulling off three to zero on the open E string. Then we play the second fret there on the B. You want to think of these little as uh, just little groups of triplets. So there's the first triplet, and then the next one is going to pull off five to two on the B, and then play the third fret there on the G string. And then we're going to pull off 3 to 6 on the G. And then 5 on the, play 5 on the D. So. And then we're going to continue from here. We're going to play 3 on the G. And pull off 5 to 2 on the D. Then uh, pull off 5 to 2 on the D. Over to 4 on the A. 
Next three notes. Two on the D, pull off four to one on the A. From here, you're gonna pull off four to one again. Over to three on the low E string. Then play one on the A string. And then pull off three to zero. So all together. So when you get to the open E string, then you're gonna come up here and do kind of a more, um, kind of a little bit easier to do and, and visualize. You're gonna play three on the low E string. Hammer six, pull back off the three. Then move over one string and up one fret. So now you're at four and seven. Do the same lick. Same thing again. Up, over one string and then up one fret. So you're at the five and eight on the D string. And then up to six and nine on the on the G. Same lick. This one now you're gonna jump up two frets to eight and eleven on the B. And then up one fret now over to 9 and 12 on the high E string. And you actually just do a trill and stay there on that one. All right, from there we have this. So he went from... Uh, a crazy diminished lick to a, a blues lick, <laughs> and it works. So you're gonna start with a bend here at the uh, tenth fret there on the B string, and then play ten seven. And then you're gonna play ten nine seven. But when you get to that seven on the G. Kind of do a quick little bend there, at least. Then you're gonna play nine seven on the D, and then nine eight seven on the A. Hit that seven again. Slide down to six, and grab that ninth fret there on the D. Then you're gonna jump up here to the 17th fret on the high E string and do a step and a half bend. And then um, from there we go to the... So after, the, after that bend, step and a half bend there, the 17th fret on the high E string, you come back down to the second fret on the G again. Bend and release there and kind of slide up the G string, and then we start um, a little descending lick again at the seventh position. Um, so it starts out straight pentatonic. So start in the high, the seventh fret on the high E string, and then play 10-7 on the B, 9-7 on the G and the D. And then we start getting chromatic here. When we get down to the... Um, the A string, you go 9, 8, 7, and then 10, 9, 8, 7 on the low E string. And into that same A kind of riff, with those double stops in the fourth and second fret that we ended the first chorus, same thing. All right. So coming out of the solo, we have the main riff again, played just like in the intro. No, you guys didn't need to hear that again, but I wanted to play it. It's a lot of fun. So then we get to verse number three. And um, very similar to verse uh, one and two, but just a little bit different fills. Um, and uh, anyway, so here's verse three with those two fills. the last 
last chorus there. So that's just like we did before. So just like verse number one. But when you get to that B power chord, and we get to the first fill in verse three, you're gonna jump up here to the 18th fret on the high E string. And you're gonna play 18 on the high E, um, 17 on the B, and then 16 on the G. You're gonna repeat that twice. Get some vibrato at the end. And then back to the same riff again. And then here you're just gonna end it with kind of this big slide into a bend on the low E string again, just kind of a random thing. Don't really worry about where you, where you go to. And then we get to the last chorus. And this chorus is three times as long as the other ones. Um, so I'm gonna play through all of it. We have a couple of fills that he throws in here as well, of course. All right, so here we go. Tommy Aldridge takes over with his drum solo. Let's learn the drum solo now. So here we go. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. So look, we'll start with the same riff, right? So it's kind of the same thing we did before. Just no fills going on. Just three times played through those those two chords, and then the so it's basically the first ending here. He repeats the full chorus three times instead of just once in this outro. So this first ending is going to end that octave thing that was a little was an octave higher than we already did um, after the second course at the end of the, in the second course. No, yeah. And then um, we get through this again, start doing the riff again, and he adds a couple of fills the second and third time through the riff this time. So that's just the same riff and the second time. You start kind of doing the arpeggiated picking and then you just come down and go hammer two to four on the A and the D. So it, and then the third time through, and you go into a bend here. Kind of a step and a half bend again at the um, the uh, 20th fret on the B string. A little whammy bar if you want, and then up and down the strings, and then we go to the riff again, one more time through the the, the chorus here. No fills, just play the riff three times, and then we're going to end it instead of with the octaves. We're going to end it with power chords. So that just ending, instead of the, the same press we did the octaves before uh, in the first chorus, but we're just going to play, no, just going to hit them one T. So second fret power chord off the A string, that B power chord, and then just go up one fret at a time, hit it once each time, all the way up to the seventh fret, and then hit it again. You get the open E string in there. Open B and high E. Big E. And that is it for the live version off the tribute album of Steal Away the Night. Randy Woods is amazing. Uh, he, uh, it's so fun to do his. I, I will make sure that I will finish every single song that Randy ever did with Ozzy. Um, it's important to document the little material we have of him with uh, in that era, um, just to get it all out there for as many people to know about it and learn from it. 
uh, because he was he was incredible um, and uh, need to keep his memory alive. All right, so I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.